Today on Cold Case, we'll take a look at the case of an athlete shot and killed in a rugby bar in Buckhead. And we'll hear from his friends almost 30 years later. We'll also tell you how you can help our partners at Crime Stoppers and in the process make some cash. I'm Kenya Johnson for this edition of Cold Case right after the break. Welcome to this edition of Cold Case. I'm Kenya Johnson. Almost 30 years ago, a 36-year-old Atlanta man was found shot and killed inside of the Buckhead Bar in which he worked, and even though the bar was a place where everyone knew everybody's name, it seems no one knew what happened to Johnny McComber, also known as Johnny Mac. Lieutenant Charles Hampton is with the Atlanta Police Department. He joins us to talk about this cold case from August 31st, 1987. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Lieutenant, can you tell our viewers what the atmosphere around the Five Paces Bar in Buckhead was in 1997? Well, like you mentioned earlier, it was a nice quiet bar where local rugby players would hang out and, you know, talk about some of the matches, upcoming matches, uh, but it was very friendly. Uh, everyone knew one another, so it was, again, a nice place to hang out and uh, go for drinks. Was this a high crime area in 1987, or was it actually okay for a shopkeeper to be alone? Uh, at the time, uh, I believe it was just a, a nice place, uh, you know, currently like the Buckhead District uh, now. Uh, again, just a nice place to hang out, have a good time. So it wasn't unusual for someone to be there alone and hanging out. Lieutenant, what comes to mind in a case such as this where someone is shot and killed at a bar? Well, the first thing, again, is you, you think that maybe robbery was the motive uh, in this case. Um, as the investigators did some work, it appeared that robbery was not the motive. Uh, they looked at the cash register. Uh, money was still inside the drawers. Uh, looked into the back room. Uh, beer was still there. So there was no indication that robbery was the motive. Um, so it was kind of strange and unusual. Um, you know, we were told that he was a, a nice, respectable man. Uh, there was nothing that came up in his past that would that, that we could think of why he was targeted for this this uh, murder. Uh, so it was kind of strange. Um, and again, it's one of the reasons we, we're here today. Since there were no immediate red herrings in this case, what were the initial steps in this investigation and what did you uncover? Well, like any cases, uh, we, we like to you know, talk to people that were there who may have solved things. Uh, we were able to talk to a couple of witnesses who saw uh, two white males run from the bar area immediately after the hearing the, the shots fired. Um, and then, again, we, we tried to contact friends, family, to see if there were any type of uh, arguments, any disagreements that uh, the victim may have had. Um, but, it, you know, the key to any uh, investigation is, is going back and, and canvassing the area, trying to go back when the crime happened to see who was there uh, and, and, and try to get as much intel uh, as we can. Now, the Five Paces Bar is still open in Buckhead some 30 years later. Has there been any activity in the past 30 years that could even remotely be connected to this crime? Not that we're aware of. Uh, you know, back then, the advantages we have now, obviously, is the use of technology. Uh, we have the advantage of uh, surveillance equipment. We have uh, cameras. Uh, that are hooked up to our uh, video integration center. Obviously, we didn't have that almost 30 years ago, uh, but nothing right now gives us any indication, uh, you know, that that there's something that will remotely resemble uh, this crime. Um, but you know, again, we we still asking people if they heard or saw anything to you know come forward and and, and give us a call. Lieutenant Hampton, what types of tips are you hoping to receive to solve this crime? Well, we're just asking anyone who was out there on July 31st, 1987, uh, you know, anywhere between, you know, midnight up to uh, 1.15 in the morning, if they saw or heard anything uh, to give us a call. It doesn't matter how uh, insignificant that they may think it is, but any tips, anything that we can follow up on, any, you know, someone may could have been talking about the murder, being around the murder, but we're asking anyone to do the right thing, come forward, 
They can call Crime Stoppers where they can't remain anonymous. Uh, they don't have to leave their name. But we're just asking you to do the right thing to help bring closure to this family. Again, it's been 30 years. Uh, the family is still hurting. You'll talk to friends later. Uh, again, this was a respectful man who loved the community, who grew up in Atlanta. And we're just asking anyone just to do the right thing. Call Crime Stoppers where you can remain anonymous. Well, someone somewhere saw something, and we're hoping to get a tip from this show today. Thank you, Lieutenant, for joining us. Oh, thank you. When we come back, we'll talk to two of Johnny McComber's friends about their loss and this nearly 30-year-old cold case. Stay with us. Welcome back to Cold Case. We've been talking about an Atlanta police cold case that has left the family and friends of Johnny McAmer without closure almost 30 years after his death. Today we welcome Lex Jolly and Armand Vary, good friends of Johnny Mac, and they join us here on Cold Case. Thank you for being here. Nice to be here. Nice to be here. We understand that you were good friends and teammates with Johnny McAmer. Can you tell us what type of guy he was and how you came to know him? I met Johnny Mac in uh, 1975 when Atlanta Old White Rugby Club came down to Florida State and played against us. Johnny Mac drove down in his own, own truck and he brought his dog, Nita Brew. And the reason that I remember Johnny Mac is because that dog was running up and down the sidelines all game waiting for Johnny to come off. His best friend was Nita Brew and then he had Keg Brew and uh, that's how I met Johnny Mac. And I met Johnny Mac in 1980. I had just gotten out of the Navy and uh, didn't have much to do until my uh, graduate study started at Georgia State. So I helped Johnny Mac ten bar and uh, uh, met him through rugby. Uh, but every Tuesday and Thursday night, the rugby team would head over to the Five Paces and uh, eventually got to be good friends with Johnny Mac. Please tell us, how did this crime impact the rugby community? Well, I think Johnny Mack was a dear friend to everybody, especially on the Atlanta Old White rugby team. Uh, I know just there, back then there were probably two rugby teams in the Atlanta area, and uh, most of them congregated over at the Five Paces, so just about everybody knew Johnny Mack that was involved in the rugby community. Take us back to the Five Paces bar in 1987. What would a patron see there on a typical night? <laughs> well. When I started going in there in the late 70s, it was a beer and some wine and maybe some dilled pickles, and that was about it. Johnny Mack ran that bar as if it, we were in the military. He was very strict about how things should be done. He was very nice to us, but he made sure that everybody behaved in there. It was a nice place to come. The rugby team, as Lex said, came in every Tuesdays and Thursdays, and after we'd win a game, we might go into the five paces on Saturday night and have a big time and Johnny Mac was always in there working. Yeah, the, the thing I remember most about the five paces was uh, it was all cash and uh, there were no credit cards back then and I'm not even sure there was a lot of wine. It was mainly uh, PBR and Budweiser. And uh, it's, uh, there was a shuffleboard table and a couple of booths and a, a bar that went uh, the whole length of one side of the room. but. Uh, it was uh, mainly just a guy's hangout. I'll give you one sample of Johnny Mac. Uh, he did work in there by himself, so when he would close up at 2 o'clock, he'd clean the whole place up, and then he'd go home and uh, go to sleep. And one night when he got done, he walked out the back door, and there was some kid in, trying to break into his truck. And Johnny Mac, being the kind of guy he was, he just grabbed him, and the kid was scared to death. He said, Oh, don't call my mom, don't call my dad, please don't call the cops. And Johnny Mac looked at him and just thought about it for a little while. He says, take your shoes off. Then he said, take your shirt off. Then he said, take your pants off. He threw him in the back of the truck and Johnny Mac left him there in the back of the five paces at 2.30 in the morning to fend for himself to go home. That's the kind of guy Johnny Mac was. It sounds as if he was a great guy and he's remembered fondly. Can you tell us how has the rugby community remembered their fallen teammate? You tell the story. Well, uh, every year before the season starts, or at least for the last 26 years, uh, we've held a, a golf tournament uh, called the uh, Mac Fitch. 
Unfortunately, about the same time Johnny Mack uh, was murdered, uh, another one of our good friends, Ralph Fitch, passed away. And uh, I guess maybe, well, 26 years ago, they decided to do something in their honor. And every year since, they've held the uh, Mack Fitch Golf Tournament, where all the rugby guys uh, try to play golf. And then uh, afterwards, they have a barbecue. All the old guys that did play with Johnny Mack and, uh, and Ralph uh, do come back into town. They come in from California, up from Florida, and everybody gets together on Friday. We play golf on Saturday, and as Lex said, we have a big barbecue. We'll have 120 golfers, and we may have 200 for the barbecue. And it's a good time to see everybody, remember our two friends, and to kick off the season. It's a good tradition. It sounds like a great tradition. Uh, being in the rugby community, was there any speculation among his friends about what may have led to a shooting? No, I think that's what baffles all of us. Uh, Johnny Mac didn't have any enemies, and as far as we know, there was no money taken that night. Uh, so, I mean, that's why we're here. We're trying to figure out why this happened to our good friend Johnny Mac. I was out of town, as a matter of fact, someone called me, I was on spring break with my kids and we jumped in the car and drove back because it was that, it was that earth shattering to us that we lost somebody at the place that we'd go to a couple times a week. It was tough. It, it was like somebody had come into our house and, uh, and just kind of uh, like a robbery or something. It was, uh, all of us had been in the five paces hundreds of times and I don't think anyone was ever afraid of anything like that happening. And then all of a sudden, one of our best friends is just murdered. It's, uh, it's kind of troubling. Johnny Mack took that job as a, an assistant to Miss Sadie, who had owned the Five Paces for over 50 years. She was into her 70s, and she used to work until 2 or 3 in the afternoon. Johnny Mack would come in at, say, 4 o'clock, and then he'd close it up, and he'd do that you know, six nights a week unless one of his other friends or one of our friends could spell him. But that was his job, his responsibility, and he took care of it like he owned it. He sounds like an overall great guy. What do you want our viewers to know about Mr. McComer and his untimely death? If there's anyone with information, what would you like to say to them today? Come forward. Uh, let us know what happened to our good friend. Thank you so much for joining us as we try to remember Mr. McComer and try to find his killer. When we come back, find out how you can earn a reward for helping to solve a cold case. Details on our partnership with Crime Stoppers when we return. The Fulton County District Attorney's Office, along with a number of law enforcement agencies, partnered to investigate and ultimately solve crimes in the community. In almost every case, the cooperation of witnesses is what helps to obtain justice. That's why we've joined forces with Crime Stoppers of Greater Atlanta. If you have any information on any cases, including the cold cases you've seen right here on this program, then please contact Crime Stoppers. If your information leads to an arrest and conviction, you can be eligible for thousands of dollars and you can be anonymous. You can also contact the District Attorney's Office at AtlantaDA.org. Well, that wraps up this edition of Fulton Cold Case. I'm Kenya Johnson. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.